what's up, witches? You know, Bilbo Baggins said third time pays for all, and this is my fourth time trying to shoot this, so pray for me. <laughs> Anyhow, this is Luna with a look at the full moon chart for Saturday, April 16th, 2022 at 2.54 p.m. is when this happens in the Eastern time zone. Let's start looking at the bar graphs down below. We have a standout in green on the top and bottom. So this is a standout of Earth and of fixed, fixity. So this gives us a Taurus chart signature, meaning overall we can approach the energies of this chart in a grounded, um, more slow moving way with uh, an eye to future consequences. Fixed signs look towards the future to what are the consequences going to be. They're outcome oriented. And um, Earth just says we deal in materials, we deal in facts, in resources, and what we can put our hand to. So that brings a real good solid foundation and um, grounding and a little bit of uh, slower slowness to this chart. And I'm very glad that's the case. So let's look at the standouts. We have this Sun-Moon opposition and the Moon is once again solitary. The biggest standout that you can have of any planet in a chart is to be solitary. The rules are if you can bisect the chart and nine planets are on one side and the moon is on the other with at least 60 degrees between it and the nearest planet, there's, there's a square between Pluto and the moon here, then it is a solitaire and it just takes all the attention. It's an attention grabber. That planet needs so much attention it kind of sucks it out of the other planets. The moon of course is our emotional expression but it's how we react to life and it's in a cardinal sign which is even more reactive and fortunately that cardinal sign is ruled by Venus so we react in order to um, make things feel better you know to be more peaceful the moon in Libra is the diplomat um, moon also shows where we derive our security and this says we feel secure when there's peaceful things around us when we are in accord with each other when we're in agreement um, and when we can have a nice time it's the social urge in Libra so we want to get out and have a nice time now air the Sun sitting in Aries is in the sign of its exaltation so the sun is just way, way, way powerful in Aries and it's all about no hindrance whatsoever to me expressing who I am and what I'm here to do. So the sun is me, me, me and here's what I want and it's opposing this moon that says, but what do you want? <laughs> the moon in Libra. No, I feel better when, when you are satisfied and happy. So you can see that that's a real conflict between that sun and that moon. But what makes it really something else is our next standout in the chart, which is this pink triangle called a T-square. We have Pluto squaring the sun and squaring the moon. Pluto, the god of the underworld. Pluto, the lord of the dead. Um, Pluto ruling autocrats and plutocrats and dictators. Pluto ruling um, the mob, anything underhanded. It rules transformation, it rules manipulation, it rules charisma, it rules in, it, its energy is inevitable, inevitably transformative. So it's hitting two of the three things that are called personal points in a natal chart, the sun and the moon, hitting us where we live. We are feeling the actions of this dictator Putin. We are feeling it in a personal way and we are expressing that with the outcry of people saying, you know, where's the aid? Can't we send more? And then we feel it in um, the moon in Libra saying we must negotiate, we must use diplomacy. But with Pluto squaring like that, is diplomacy going to work or is it just going to go to an extreme either or black and white situation where neither party will give an inch. See, Pluto goes to extremes. So we can see personal expression going to an extreme. Pluto sun square like this is ruthless. And it's, um, it's my way or the highway. My will be done is what I see with that Pluto sun square. 
and then squaring the moon. Um, gosh, let me see if I can get a handle on this one. I might have to think about it while I'm talking about other things here. So this, uh, this T-square is a really big standout. We have, I'm just going to go with what this T-square connects with. Um, we have Pluto also squaring the North Node. The North Node being the karmic way forward. And for us right now, the karmic way forward is through practical measures, that's Taurus, practical material measures. And with it trining to Pluto, um, when we do move forward in the right way rather than the easy way, Pluto comes in as an aid and helps us to change things inside out from the top to the bottom, um, absolutely. Pluto rules absolute anything, you know, you, Pluto could be the, the um, adjective absolute. Okay, so we also have, um, I want to mention this here, we also have this Neptune-Jupiter conjunction in Pisces. This became exact this week and really has opened up this expansive compassion and empathy and the outreach we see support really expanding and flowing in neptune is that urge to assist the underdog it rules compassion it also rules pity and jupiter is the expansion principle and generosity so and you know it talks about governments and things global things on a global basis so we see this global outreach to help these people that are suffering so Neptune uh, ruling suffering and Pisces. Then we have Venus here in Pisces as well. Venus in the sign of its exaltation. Or is it exalted in Cancer? Uh-oh. Anyhow, Venus in Pisces. Oof, talk about the arts. You have this in a natal chart. There's going to be artistic ability and such a sense of beauty. So Venus shows how we express affection. And here we want to express it in a beautiful way, in an all-encompassing way, in a boundaryless way. Um, in a way that, that provides and kind of rescues and, um, you know, nurtures, like I said, in a boundaryless way. Then look at the fact that we've got Mars also hitting Pisces this week. So the, the god of war has come into this damp, foggy, compassionate sign of Pisces. So I think we can maybe see a cooling. Hopefully we have the potential to have a cooling of um, warlike impulses, but that could also be, um, you know, a, a tr trigger to ramp up the, you know, we can't cool this off. I have to be, get even stronger, you know, from Putin's side. Anyway, I don't mean this to be a chart reading about Putin, but damn it, when it's right in front of your face, you can't avoid it. Um, all right, so let's take Venus and. Uh, hike over here 60 degrees to find an exact Mercury Uranus conjunction. Now it's applying still. It's two degrees and a few minutes away, um, but it is applying to conjunction. So it absolutely counts and it's still only within two degrees. So um, Mercury, the logical mind, how we process facts and information. Um, you know, how we work something through mentally to come to a conclusion. So it's the mechanics of thinking. Uranus represents genius and intuition, which is like quantum thinking. You, it's not a mechanical um, paradigm anymore where you need A plus B to equal C. With Uranus, you get one and a half facts and then you can leap ahead into an intuitive insight into what this could be, what the outcome could be. So talk about an amazing setup for practical thinking, forward thinking. How do we want the new to begin? So look at this, you know, this T-square could be incredibly destructive, incredibly destructive. And with it, we are given the ability to see forward into a new future. And I'm thinking if the if we can pour energy into this Mercury, Uranus conjunction in Taurus, practical, grounded, um, 
forward thinking, futuristic thinking, humanitarian thinking that is sextiled by the goddess of love going boundaryless in compassion and empathy and the sextile says opportunities open up through the expression of our love for those that are suffering we can open an opportunity and start thinking about the new ways to do things before we've had to utterly destroy the old you know the path of destruction is one that is so long and familiar to us and we tend to think that the old must be destroyed so that we can you know start the new but i think if we can dream the new in sufficiently practical ways and start to implement these things then it's a matter of following you know following a star kind of because people can see oh this new way is so much better how did we ever do it that way before and the old outworn ways are willingly dropped in favor of the new that is more practical and more egalitarian venus in pisces says that the that resources are for everyone equally you know the sharing of resources so that is a beautiful, beautiful aspect here. And then we've got the Jupiter-Neptune uh, conjunction in conjuncting the moon. So, you know, moon can represent your insecurities. And with Neptune involved, it can kind of make your sense of security dissolve. Um, or we can get idealistic about things. Uh, certainly with Jupiter-Neptune conjunct, uh, Neptune is rose-colored glasses. Neptune is when you can see the potential in somebody rather than their behaviors that they're showing you emphatically. This is the way I am. Oh, but I see what he could be. <laughs> so they are the rose-colored glasses. So we have a tendency to strongly idealize things with this conjunction. And in conjuncting the moon, I think when we're talking about negotiations, when we're talking about security, uh, we just need to make sure that we go back to the uranus mercury conjunction here in taurus and look at things in realistic terms rather than idealistic and emotional terms i think that makes sense and then we've got saturn that's also squaring that north node reminding us again that the way forward is through responsibility we have to be responsible for the consequences of every damn choice we make going forward or you know it's instant karma with that square there ruled by Uranus, instant karma is going to get you. And, um, you know, we're still in pay the piper mode. We are paying for our nuclear ways. And with Saturn squaring the North Node, it says we can find the way forward to, to be delayed and to feel like we're dragging a ton of weight behind us. And we are. We're dragging the weight of all of our choices and all of this... Um, proliferation of nuclear weapons worldwide we have a huge weight we're dragging behind us and we have to pay and take responsibility for those choices so anyhow let me talk to you about ritual time um that t-square makes huge um energy available to us on a personal level so with Pluto sitting in Capricorn at the apex, we want it. We want to structure it. We want to make sure that our boundaries are super firm. Going into circle, get your guides stationed at your quarters and let them protect you. Because with all this Piscean energy, you could trance out and just do wonderful ethereal work. Um, Pluto says it's going to be transforming. It's going to kick your ass too. Personally transform it. It's squaring Sun and both and Moon. You know both. <laughs> so um, be brave, be bold, calling your guides to get in the way of anything that you shouldn't be doing and to filter out any excesses for you and tap into that power, take responsibility, think about the future and how you can innovate. I mean, what a chart. Again, what a chart. <laughs> I hope you got something from this. And uh, if you did, Hit subscribe and like and the bell notice and there's a couple links down below that you can uh, donate to support me and my channel and I thank you for every single thing that you do in that regard thank you so much for clicking the button and hanging out with me I will see you next time around and until then this is Luna blessed be